Hi, this is Eric Miller from iPhone Photography School, and in this video, you'll learn how to use the image tools in Enlight. When you click on image, you notice you get three options, adjust, clarity, and target. Let's start with adjust. If you tap on adjust, you'll notice that you get a number of preset filter options over on the right. Crisp, vivid, contrast, HDR, a whole bunch of options you can play with. You might find that you like some of these, but that they're maybe just a little bit too strong for you. So you can always move your finger to the left or to the right to decrease or increase the strength of the filter. As with other tools in InLight, the filters are fully customizable by you. You can just click on the Tools button and you'll be given a bunch of different options which show you what those preset filters are doing. For instance, let's tap on basic and you'll see that the filter that we have chosen right now is increasing the brightness by 21 percent. But We can increase it further or decrease it. We can also increase the contrast or decrease the contrast further. I'm going to go ahead and click on tools, go back to our tools menu. The next thing I want to talk about is the details option. If you click on that, you'll see you get a whole bunch of different options here which have to do with how much contrast and how much sharpening is happening in the image. Structure here, add some contrast to your midtones, give you that HDR look. I want to add just a little bit of contrast there and sharpen will help just make your image look a little bit crisper. Pretty much every image needs a little sharpening. If I zoom in on the image by pinching, you can see what the sharpening is doing. You might think, oh, I want this to be very sharp, so I'm going to bring my sharpening up to 100. But usually that's not a good idea. If you do that, your image can look a little bit over-edited. So I'm just going to bring up the sharpening to about 25 or so. Zoom back out again. The blacks tool will increase or decrease where your black level is in the photo. And shadows will, um, you can increase the shadows or make the shadows be a little bit darker. Shadows are kind of one step above blacks. Blacks are the darkest part of your photo. Also, you can control how bright or dark the highlights are. You can see what's happening with the highlights if I move the highlights all the way to the right, or if I move the highlights back down to the left. It increases or decreases the brightness of just those highlights. The next tool I want to talk about is Split Tone. Now this is pretty interesting because it can control the color in your darks and your lights separately. Let me show you how that works. First thing I'm going to do is bring the darks color up a little bit, and then you can see what happens if I change the hue of the darks. If you notice at the very, very top of my screen, there's a little color picker there. If I move my finger to the right, you see that blue bar move through all the colors? So now my darks are greener. Now my darks are more purple. It's a very powerful tool. Same thing with the lights. I'm going to bring the lights up a little bit so we can see what's happening. And then I'm going to click on Lights Hue. And I can make my lights be a little yellower or oranger, or I can make my lights be purple. Once I found a color I like, I can tap on lights and then bring down that intensity so it doesn't look quite so fake. That darks is probably a little bit strong. I'm going to bring that down. Look at the before and after. That looks pretty nice. Click on tools one more time. And the last thing I want to show you is the curves adjustment. Now the curves adjustment works like curves in any other app. If you're not familiar with it, over on the left, these are our darks. And over on the right at the top are our brights. So if I click and drag in the middle, I'll make the image kind of overall be brighter in the midtones and overall be darker in the midtones. A lot of times what you'll see is a nice S curve, which will be uh, more contrast in your photo. If I tap on the line there, I can add a point, bring that up a little bit, and 
tap over there and bring that down a little bit and you can see I've just added some more contrast to my image. Now in this case I think my image already had enough contrast in it so I'm going to click on the tools button again and then click on the left arrow to undo those curves. There. Now I'm happy with the way this image looks. I'm going to click on the check mark. And that's how you use adjust in the image tool in Enlight. I'm going to click on the undo tool to go back to the beginning here. And next, let's talk about the clarity tool in Enlight. If I click on clarity, you'll see my filter options are over on the right. This is a little bit different than the filter options we got in the image adjust tool. Clarity looks pretty good there. If I click on the tools option, you can see what clarity is doing here. It's adjusting the amount of contrast in my midtones. If I click on clarity, I can increase or decrease that. It also has my sharpening and it has another option for sharpening which is called fine. Just a little more fine tuning for your sharpening. I can increase the blacks or decrease the blacks and I can control the saturation in the photo overall. Show you before and after. And if I don't like any of that, click on the X to start back at the beginning. Click on Clarity one more time and pick a different preset. And those are some of the things you can do with the Clarity tool in, in Light. I'm going to undo to start at the beginning. The last tool I want to show you under Image is the Target tool. Now this is really powerful because it lets you affect just one part of the image. Let's say for example that I want to make these buildings up here be a little bit more colorful. If I move the center dot over just the buildings and then pinch to make my circle smaller, you can see the area that is highlighted in red will be affected by whatever I do next. You can also see there's a little arrow here at the bottom. If I move that, that affects how sharp a transition area. In this case I want it to be pretty sharp, I just want to affect those buildings. Next I'm going to click on the Tone button and let's say I want to make those buildings be a little more colorful. I'll click on Saturation and I'll drag my finger to the right and you can see I'm adding saturation but just to those buildings, not to the rest of the image. That's a pretty powerful tool. Now you can stack these effects one on top of one another. If I click the arrow that's pointing down, I'll flatten the image. And then if I go back to Tools, I can add another target area. I'm going to click on Position. And let's say I want to make this building over here be a little bit brighter. I just don't like how dark it is. Again, I can pinch and move the little arrows so that my I'm just affecting that building there. That looks pretty good. And if I click on Tone, and if I click on Exposure, and drag my finger to the right, you'll see I'm just making that building there be brighter, nothing else. Add a little bit more contrast to that. Actually, maybe I'll decrease the contrast. Look at before and after. And you can see I'm making the building brighter. I guess I'm also affecting a little bit of the bushes. If I go back to position here, I can decrease that area so that I don't affect the bushes quite so much. Maybe I'll pinch even tighter. And there. Now I'm just affecting that building. And I'm going to go ahead and click the check mark. And if I click on the before and after, you can see the two changes that I've made. I've made the building on the left lighter, and I've added some saturation to the buildings in the middle of the photo. And those are just some of the things that you can do with the target tool in, in light.